Thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow. We want to check in with Tara now, who is with a legal expert to help us make a little more sense of what could be to come for the prime suspect in that shooting out of Tucson. Yeah, of course, this is the story that's gripped the nation. We are talking about Jared Loeffner. He made his initial appearance yesterday in federal court, lasted about 20 minutes. Joining us this morning, attorney Monica Lindstrom. I know you've been getting a ton of questions yes. from your friends because right now we've got five federal charges against yes. him. They will add to that and they will also add state charges. So how does Definitely. all of that for someone like me, how does that all play out? Well, we have two jurisdictions. We have the federal jurisdiction in Arizona. Federals only handle breaking of federal laws. So they're filing charges right now for the assassination or attempted assassination of a federal employee, federal employee, federal employee. So their laws kind of stop there. Now the state will come in and file charges, uh, attempted murder, murder, aggravated assault for all of the victims who are not federal employees. So you have the interplay of the two jurisdictions. And he can go to jail for both. He can go to the state mental hospital for both. But right now we have the feds who started the process and they filed a criminal complaint to keep him in custody. So Arizona is not in a hurry to file their charges yet. They've got time. Well, I know the preliminary hearing is uh, coming up in about a week Correct. or so. You say yep. things will kind of die down until that day. Yes. Um, and then we look at a long, lengthy trial, a possible a seeking of the death penalty. Um, there's a judge out of San Diego that has taken this case. Yes. Why? I, I, you know, a lot of people, why would you want to take this case? I mean, he's got witnesses everywhere. Yeah. So much evidence. It's not that the judge wants to take the case, but here in I mean Arizona. the attorney, I'm sorry. Oh, the attorney, yes. Judy Clark, yes. She has proven herself to be a very competent attorney. The federal government keeps using her and appointing her for cases. It's just like any other job. It's a challenge for her, most likely. She probably enjoys the challenge. Um, she probably separates her emotions and what really happened from her job and what needs to be done with her clients. Okay, now part of her job, obviously, will be to argue the whole mental health aspect. Aspect. But yes. here you've got somebody clearly disturbed, but yet there's a litany of postings and, oh, yeah. and video and, and an apology before even the actions are yes. committed where he seems to be fully aware that that's what he's right. doing is not right. And that's a really good point because people need to understand there is a difference between what we would consider crazy and disturbed and what's legally insane under the law. They're two very different things. So she has to have a psychiatrist or an expert prove that at the time of the shooting, when he walked up and shot these people, that he basically didn't know what he was doing was wrong. And I think that's gonna be very difficult. They'll always find somebody that will say that he is, but I think it's gonna be difficult because of what you pointed out, his, his blog posts, his MySpace posts, his letter, that kind of information, and that's all gonna come into play. Where will this trial take place? I know uh, so many people in this state clearly affected by this. Yes, there's two aspects. We'll have the federal trial and the state trial, if it even goes to trial and he doesn't take a plea. The federal trial, she's gonna to try to get it moved so that she doesn't have a tainted jury and we've already got a different judge because none of the judges here want to handle sure. it because a lot of them knew him yeah judge it's a Rose. personal connection now with the state action they'll probably be able to keep it here because it is Arizona law it's not California it's not Nevada so it needs to stay here I'd be very surprised if they move the state action out of the state it'll be in Phoenix mm -hmm. it won't be in Tucson right. uh, but I think that one will stay here interesting I'm Michael yes. Thanks for joining us this yeah. morning. We appreciate it. Uh, we've got a lot coming up. Up next, we will check our forecast. April says, boy, are we in for a treat if you're taking a three-day holiday. Uh, but the folks up... Faces judge. That is in the New York Post today. He's accused in a heinous crime, but he has to be defended in court. That's the way our system works. Yeah, a lawyer who has defended the Unabomber, an Al-Qaeda terrorist, and some of the world's most notorious suspects is now defending Jared Loeffner. How does somebody defend a person seen as a monster? Attorney Monica Lindstrom, Fox Legal Expert, joining us now to discuss mm -hmm. what really has become the most watched case in the nation. Judy yes. Clark is the attorney. Jared Lautner has got the help of somebody who um, is considered pretty good. I mean, oh, she's yeah. let, helped other people escape the death penalty, inc yep. including the Unabomber, mm -hmm. Eric Rudolph, the abortion clinic bomber, and Susan Smith. She's the mother who drowned her boys. She's a pretty good attorney, but how does yes. somebody sit across from a person who the entire nation thinks is a monster and say, I want to help you? 
You know, for some people, it's extremely difficult, and those people don't take cases like this. People like Judy Clark are able to separate their emotions from their job. Her job is to defend him and make sure that the government did their job, that the cops did the right investigation, and that the prosecutors are doing the right thing. So she